last briefing, we talked about the role of women in ministry and how that has been changing over the years. And I ended off the last broadcast to talk about maybe you want, might want to question this area a little bit more. So I thought maybe it would be best instead for us to uh, look at the whole issue of church leadership. Do you lead a church in the same way that you lead a business? Are the principles of leadership that are espoused in so many books and so many seminars and webinars, are they the principles that apply to the church? Well, I think the church is very unique because we model our leadership upon the model of Jesus Christ. How did Jesus lead? What was his heart? What was his attitude? So let's explore this issue of church leadership. First of all, the attitude of church leadership. Society sees leadership as a polished presentation of promises. We're going to do this or that, or I promise you this or that, and, or if we follow the certain steps, this will be the outcome. It's not that way with Jesus. Jesus instead led with gentleness and grace. These are his words in Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You see, the attitude of Jesus wasn't that of lording it over someone else, giving direction and precise steps for the way that people were to go. Instead, he would often answer a situation with a question. He would take an action himself to demonstrate what we should do as his followers and as leaders in the church that we have right now. Secondly, there's a heart to church leadership. And that is having a heart for loving servanthood. Again, the words of Jesus in Mark 10, 43, 44. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Folks, this aspect of life was very familiar in the culture in which Jesus grew up and in which he taught and lived. It was a culture where you were surrounded with slaves, with servants. And they were treated, for the most part, very poorly. But Jesus came and said, look, unless you have the attitude of a good servant, then you're not fit really for leadership. You will never become first until you're willing to become last. The words of the poet Brindley Boone need to be the heart of all those who want to be a leader in the church. Oh, for a heart of compassion, moved at the impulse of love lost ones to bring to thy footstool, thy gracious riches to prove. So here are the practicalities of leadership in the church. First of all, leadership is not an issue of gender. We are considered equal in God's sight. Leadership is not an issue of age. You don't have to wait until you're have silver hair or no hair. Leadership is not an issue of church politics. And let's face it, politics are everywhere. They do more to divide us than to unite us. But what leadership is, is an issue of seeking God's will and purpose for your life as an individual. And then secondly, it's an issue of following that purpose and will 
that God reveals. Jesus said, ask and ye shall receive. And folks, it's not just for material things. It's especially for things of the heart. If you want to be a leader, then open your heart to the Spirit's leading and allow Him to show you the path that you must tread. Just a closing illustration. My background was in the Salvation Army and one of the heroes of my faith is William Booth. But I don't know if you know that William Booth at the age of 16 was employed as a, an apprenticed pawnbroker. And in that situation, he saw so much the needs of people around him. So at the age of 16, he knelt by his bedside and he said, God shall have all there is of William Booth. He went on to be a great evangelist. He went on to form the Salvation Army that's at work in over a hundred countries around the world this day and is known not only for its good social works, but also as a Salvation Army offering the gospel of God. We'll look forward to talking with you again next week.